When I visited the Getty Museum, I saw a lot of beautiful pieces of art. For this project, I chose two paintings that I was naturally drawn to because of their contrasting tones and depictions, but similar beauty. One portrays a more grand scene with bright, vivid colors, while the other portrays a more intimate scene with a more complex use of color and shadow. Artist Lawrence Alma Tadema was born in a small village in the Netherlands on January 8, 1836. He was born with the name Lawrence, which he later changed to Lawrence because it was more of an English name. His full name came from his godfather, and although he may have wanted to change it entirely, he continued to include Alma in his last name, with the intention of having his name show up first in exhibition catalogs since it started with the letter A. When the artist was a mere four years of age, his father passed away, which left his mother to raise him and his siblings alone. She deemed it necessary to include drawing lessons as a part of her children's studies due to her artistic inclination. This is when Alma Tadema first started getting professional training in art by a drawing master in his town. When he was only 15 years old, Alma Tadema had a physical and mental breakdown and was told he didn't have much longer to live. Because of this, he was allowed to spend his days however he chose to, which meant drawing and painting. He managed to recover on his own and made the ultimate decision to become an artist. He then spent years studying at an academy and painting under the guidance of some highly regarded artists. In 1861, the artist created his first major piece called The Education of the Children of Clovis. Although loved by many, this piece was criticized by his mentor at the time, specifically his depiction of marble, which he compared to cheese. This criticism ultimately led to the significant improvement of the artist's technique, and he soon became known as the world's elite painter of marble and granite. In 1894, at the age of 58, Alma Tadema created his painting, Spring. This piece seems to be a portrayal of a Roman festival in the spring, likely one that commemorates fertility and abundance called Floralia, named after Flora, who was the goddess of flowers. The artist was considered a happy, lively man, and his personal motto was, as the sun colors flowers, so art colors life. It can be easily inferred from his paintings and his outlooks that Alma Tadema was a positive person who appreciated beauty and detail. In Lawrence Alma Tadema Spring, Louise Lippincott writes, His paintings that ostensibly represent scenes from ancient Roman life are filled with the prosperity, ease, sociability, amenities, and tidiness characteristic of his own world. They speak volumes not only about his personality and way of life, but also his passion for painting and art as a whole. In this piece specifically, Alma Tadema's use of light, color, and line are a great representation of his own character. Women and children wearing flower crowns and playing instruments are depicted in a city of marble, staying consistent with his unparalleled marble technique. There are splashes of bright color all throughout the tall painting over a more neutral background. The flowers seem to be the most brightly colored parts of the painting, and therefore my attention was naturally drawn to them. The colors are what make this painting exude a true sense of vibrance, spirit, and life. Additionally, the artist's placement of lines in the painting is neatly structured, which can be seen in the marble tiles on the floor, on the stairs, and on the high columns. His use of light is very bright and vi vivid, giving the painting an overall tone that radiates joy, hope, and warmth. Pierre-Auguste Renoir was born in Limoges, France, into a working-class family on February 25, 1841. He worked in a porcelain factory, painting on fine china due to his artistic talents. In his early years, he attended an art school and frequently went to the Louvre in order to study the most famous French painters. He studied art under the guidance of Charles Glair, st starting in 1862, during which he met some highly regarded and well-known artists, such as Monet. In 1871, at the time of the Paris Commune, Renoir painted by the Seine, and he was thought to be a spy by a few members of a commune group. They planned on throwing him into the river, but fortunately, the leader of the group realized that Renoir had actually saved him earlier on, which ultimately saved his life in that moment. In 1874, Renoir took part in the first ever Impressionist exhibition and continued to participate in the following exhibitions, officially labeling him an Impressionist painter. Renoir traveled a lot in the early 1880s to see several different artworks and possibly gain some inspiration for his own art. As an act of loyalty, he gave a few of his paintings to the French Impressionist Paintings Catalogue, 
per the request of Queen Victoria's associate in 1887. A few years later, Renoir fell ill with rheumatoid arthritis and moved closer to the Mediterranean coast where it was warmer. Even with the limitations he had to face because of his arthritis, the artist didn't stop painting. At one point, his fingers became paralyzed from the severity of his arthritis, so he could only paint by strapping a brush onto his fingers. When creating sculptures, he guided his assistant to work the clay exactly how he wanted. In 1870, Renoir created his painting called La Promenade, although the actual title of the painting chosen by the artist was not known. Monet's influence on Renoir is clearly shown in this specific painting through the integration of lighter colors as well as rich, feathery brush strokes. The painting depicts a seemingly romantic moment in time in which a woman and a man appear to be taking a stroll in nature, possibly in a park in Paris. The woman, wearing a long, white dress, is looking over her shoulder, away from the man, while he holds her hand and pushes the leaves out of a tree, out of the way to clear the path for her. Renoir's use of line, color, and light are very interesting to me in this painting. His use of line specifically in the way he moves, he creates movement and dimension through different brush strokes is subtle yet powerful. The color palette the artist used in his painting is what I found most appealing. Different shades of brown and green painting the calm, earthy tone, while the contrasting bright white of the woman's dress captures the viewer's attention. Renoir's use of light in this painting is what I found most impressive. His shadowing techniques create a juxtaposed feel to the painting, some aspects appearing darker and moodier, and others appearing brighter and more vibrant. Renoir creates a sense of light filtering through the trees and illuminates the path on the ground which the subjects are walking along.